to you today from the 14th century Italian. I present to you a piece that my documentation has been in conflict of whether this is a French or an Italian piece. So, most people say the thing is Italian. Once upon a time, there was a beggar boy, and his name was Giovanni. He had no father, he had no mother, he was in fact an orphan, but he had a talent. He could juggle. And so every morning he would get up and he would go to the fruit stand and he would stand there, this little boy, and he would juggle. And he would juggle the apples and the oranges and the bananas and the lemons and the zucchini and, and the eggplant. And he would juggle and he, the crowds would come and watch and if they came to watch, they stayed to buy. And so he would buy from the fruit seller. At the end of the day, the fruit seller's wife would give Giovanni a bowl of soup. Good deal for Giovanni. This went on for many years, until one day it happened that a group of traveling players came through the town, and Giovanni was mesmerized by Harlequino and Colombina and the Capitano and all of the feats and the fighting and all of this stuff, and he said, that, that is the life for me. So he went to the Capiconico and he said, can I join your, your, your troop of players, please? And he said, I really don't think we have space in our troop for a little ragged hag muffin of a beggar boy. Shoo. He said, but sir, I could take care of the mules. I, I could learn. And, and I can juggle. You can juggle. Well, well, show me your juggling. So he did. He, he picked up rocks and stones and leaves and he juggled. And he said, OK, we'll give you a shot. We will make you a clown and we will put you in front of the audiences and we will have you entertain the crowds while they wait while we prepare the show. We'll give you a bowl of noodles. We won't pay you, but, but you're welcome to travel with us. And they said, great, good deal for Giovanni. So they became off. he went off to become a traveling player. He said goodbye to Senior and Senior Bastista, and off he went. And he entertained the crowds. And the Capi Comico was very impressed, and so he taught him neat tricks. He taught him how to juggle with the scarves, and the sticks, and the plates, and to twirl the plates on the sticks. But there was a special trick that taught Giovanni, and this was pulled out of special occasions for really important audiences where Giovanni would stand there and he would have the red ball and he'd throw it up into the air, and the yellow and the orange and the green and the blue and the violet, and then the sun of the heavens would rise, a gold ball would fly into the air, the swirl of color and the crowds were amazed and they roared with laughter and joy. And this went on, and Giovanni learned. And soon the crowds were coming as much to see Giovanni's juggling as they were to see the play. And Giovanni grew and aged and, and eventually bought his way out of the troupe and went off on his own to entertain the crowds and be a traveling player of his own. And off the, and the high and the low and the crowds enjoyed his act and their laughter and the, the joy of everything followed him. Time passes, Giovanni slows down. The notes become more illegible. <laughs> Giovanni slows down, he becomes an older man, and one day it started happening. He would drop a stick, he would drop a plate, he'd drop the orange ball. But there was one day as he grew older and more tired, he dropped the sun of the heavens. And on that day he sat beside a stream in sorrow and sadness, and he set aside his name and he set aside the, mace, the mask of a clown, and he set aside his beautiful costume that had grown over time into very elaborate pieces. And he became a nameless beggar. One night, there was a cold, icy rain, winter, very bitter. He came across a church, still silent in the night, and he sought in their sanctuary. And it was dark, and it was quiet and it was warmed by the candle, so he found a quiet alcove, and he went to sleep. And then, in the middle of the night, there awoke, he found a crowd of people in their finest, the high and the low, wearing their best gowns. And it was color and light and jewels and music and choirs, and it was beautiful. And he asked, what is going on? And, and a passing person said, well, old man, it's, it's, it's the birth of the, the celebration of the birth of the Holy Child. This is the presentation of the gifts to the, to the lady and the child. And he
And he sat there and he watched as one by one the people in the procession delivered their tokens and their gifts and their, their candles to the, to the statue of the mother and the child. Until, once again, the church was silent and dark, except for the light that shone on the mother and the child statue. And he made his slow way up, and he looked, and the lady was beautiful and serene. But the child, the child was serious, the child was stern, and he thought to himself, I wish I had something to give you. But wait, I used to know how to bring laughter. I used to know how to bring smiles. Child, I will juggle for you. And he went and he found his pack and he pulled out and shook out his old costume. And he again put on the face of the clown. And he stood there and he started slow with the scarves and the sticks and the plates twirling plates and the clubs and the rings and the more he juggled the more he remembered he was Giovanni he was a clown who had juggled for a prince a duke for crowds that had laughter of joy not sneers not taunting not thrown rocks this this was good and he gave his best and then he reached down in bravery and he found the red ball. And about this time, one of the brothers came by and said, oh my gosh, there is a clown juggling in the church. <laughs> <laughs> the brother Sexton is like, he's, he's very upset about this. He's mortified, the blasphemy. He runs off to find the abbot. Meanwhile, Giovanni is completely unaware that his brother has come in to put out the candles and has gone and ran. And he pulls out the orange ball and the yellow and the green, the blue violet and the swirl of color grows and Giovanni is juggling better than he ever has in his life he is juggling for this child and he reaches down and here is the son of the heavens and it flies up but Giovanni was not there to catch it for he had fallen collapsed upon the floor about this time the abbot and the brother have come back into the vestibule they looked down and they said, oh my goodness, the poor clown has died. And, and the abbot is sitting there kind of in shock and he's giving the last rites and he looks up and the brother Sexton is just pointing at the statue. Abbot, do you see it? And the abbot looks up and there is the lady serene and there is the child holding the son of the heavens. He is smiling.